Hello everyone watching and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over the Unite the Right and Unite the Left ideas that are currently flooding Western countries and their political systems. So I think the best place to start is France. France had, on the 10th of April and the 24th of April, presidential elections. And as you can see from this screen, there were a lot of candidates. You had over 10 candidates run, and you had some from the left, such as the New Anti-Capitalist Party, the Socialist Party, Left France in Simis. Uh, you had many left-wing parties. You also had many right-wing parties. You had the National Rally of Marine Le Pen. You had the Republicans and their Pécresse. You had Resistance and their LaSalle. Long story short, Centrist Macron made it to the runoff against Le Pen, and he won because the left wing couldn't bear to see Le Pen win. However, something that was not noticed enough at the time was that the left wing candidate, the lean left wing candidate at least, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, was only 2% off of taking that second spot, and only 6 points off of taking the first place spot. And Yannick Jadot of the Greens, who had 5%, and Fabien Roussel of the Communists, who had 2 and Hidalgo of the Socialists, who had 2 if they had all come together behind Mélenchon, Mélenchon would have won. He would have at least won in the first round. He would have made it to the second round, where he probably would have lost to Macron due to the right wing voting for um, Macron over Mélenchon. However, then you notice another thing, which is that Eric Zemmour and Valerie Pécresse of the far-right Reconquête and center-right to right-wing Republicans, they had 12% of the vote. So if you added them to Le Pen, you added the left-wing to Mélenchon, you could have had a far-right versus left-wing to far-left uh, presidential election. And so you had the idea immediately after that come out of, oh, well, we should, you know, combine, we should make some right-wing coalitions, some left-wing coalitions, defeat the centrists. And somehow that didn't happen on the right, which was previously much more united than the left. And the left, which had been having essentially a civil war in terms of if it wanted to go further left or more centrist, decided to come together with a coalition and it paid off. The left-wing vote in the first round grew by 1% compared to what it had previously been back in 2017. However, the left-wing vote in the second round, which is the runoffs in each of the constituencies, was 32%, rising 20%, which means that the left-wing did significantly better in the runoffs and got significantly more candidates to the runoffs than they previously had. Meanwhile, on the right, the more center-right Republicans with their alliance with the also center-right uh, liberal conservatives, they lost tons of votes, mostly to the far-right under Le Pen. And so, now, when you look at who won the most seats, you look at this. And as you can see here, you have the far-right, you have the center-right, and together there have been many calls to unite these parties and the union of the right and the center, which is center right, they are actually now have a leader who is much more favorable to the far right than it is to even the centrist, let alone the left. And of course the left wing, they have their own bloc, which is obviously much more friendly towards other left wingers, whether it be even communists, than they are to the centrists on the Macron. And together, these two forces help to essentially knock out the centrist chances of holding the legislative assembly, and they now have a minority government. But this wasn't even the first time that a country such as France had such a essentially crazy unite the right or unite the left movement. For example, back in 1997, the previous progressive conservative party collapsed and they essentially split between three parties. You had the progressive conservatives who were center-right, you had reform, later the Canadian alliance, which is right-wing, and you had the Bloc Québécois, which was your more Quebec separatist, economically populist in Quebec. And while together the parties got nearly 50% of the vote, 1911 and again 19 respectively, they were very close to the 50%, and they would have definitely been the Liberal Party if they had just united. 
And this meant by 2008, when the bloc was starting to lose a lot of its steam, and the Reform and Progressive Conservatives united, the Conservatives were able to win majorities. The right wing was able to unite, and within a few years, the Liberals and the New Democrats, and even the Greens to a lesser respect, would have their own Unite the Left issues. In 2019, in the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson's Conservatives gained only 1% of the vote, and yet gained 48 seats, which was one of the largest majorities for Conservatives in a very long time. And this was mostly because the main center-left party lost 8% of its vote, mostly to center-center-left Liberal Democrats and to the SNP in Scotland, as well as other smaller left-wing parties. The Conservatives didn't gain much, it was simply the left-wing fracturing, just like it had been in 1997 in Canada, and just like it was in the 2022 French presidential elections. Which brings us to the three elections that are coming up very, very soon. First, we have Italy. Italy has had political issues for a very, very long time. You had, of course, the far-right uh, Liga Nord, and they were until recently an outcast from the government, until Silvio Berlusconi of Forza Italia, he essentially invited them to the center-right coalition, which then also invited some would say neo-fascists, others would say national conservatives, the Brothers of Italy, and now the Us Moderates Party, which is a center-right party. That was the Unite the Right movement in Italy. It was showing itself there. They learned from France, they learned from the Canadians, and they learned from the United Kingdom. You need to have a united right for the right to win, and the left wing learned this too. The more left-wing uh, faction in the Five Star Movement broke off, became its own party and joined the center-left bloc, as did the Greens and Left movement, and as Action Italia Viva, which is a center-center-left liberal party, will probably do as well. In Brazil, you have, once again, four candidates, each representing their own factions. The right is mostly between the MDP, which is a more center-right, and, of course, the main right-wing candidate, but also from the far right, Jair Bolsonaro, the current president of the country. There's been many unite the right questions in Brazil, but the left is fractured too, with their more center left to left wing under previous president Lula da Silva, and the definitely center left uh, anti communist Ciro Gomes of the Brazilian Labour Party, and they've had their own struggles. And because of that, it seems that it's going to be fractured, not only there, but in the Chamber of Deputies in the Federal Senate, where essentially the left wing is going to be fractured and the right wing will be fractured as well, which just leads to more chaos. But perhaps the best example of a current Unite the Right movement was in Sweden. In Sweden, back in 2018, you had a new phenomenon. You had not only did the main governing center-left party lose votes and seats, but the main center-right party or right-wing party, the moderates, part of the alliance, which was center-right to right-wing, also lost seats. And pretty much all the small parties gained seats outside of the Greens. However, most important was the rise of the far-right, the Sweden Democrats. In order to form a government, the alliance, which was center-to-center-right, right-wing, would have had to have the Sweden Democrats on board, but the more center-right parties in the alliance, such as the Liberals and also the Center Party, decided to say that they would no longer support any government that had the Sweden Democrats, and that meant that the Social Democrats from the center-left were able to gain support just enough from the alliance, the far-left left-wingers, uh, and of course the center-right Liberals. But the Unite the Right movement in Sweden succeeded, and the Sweden Democrats are now part of a four-party collaboration that aims to essentially get rid of the Social Democrats and the left wing altogether. Meanwhile, the center party from the right wing has shifted much more towards the left. Essentially, they have exchanged their right wing supporters to the liberals, while the liberals gained their left wing supporters to the center party, which means that you now have a four-way social democrat-led coalition on the left, and a four-way moderate and Sweden democrat coalition on the right, 
which leads to, as I've said, unite the left and unite the right movements. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to comment and like and subscribe.